Warning. <coughs> Jesus Christ. <coughs> I have to leave. Hi. I will be trying to make some benzyl chloride. So these are basic ingredients. What you would need is toluene, should be dry, some hydrochloric acid, TCCA and some light source. This process is based on Science Madness forum post. I basically distilled down the chlorination step to three steps. As you can see, it's pretty easy. But it will take quite some time, so I'm not processing all of this toluene that I have in here. I will use probably like 100 mils or so. So I've done this in past. I had basically one flask and one condenser. So I had to put rubber stopper here because I did not have anything else. And guess what? It started to burn in chlorine atmosphere, so that was exciting. I mean, I got some smelly liquid from that, so perhaps it even worked. So I will start by adding some freshly baked calcium chloride to the toluene. Then I need to dry chlorine gas, so I made this glass tube and the idea was that with larger tube diameters it will be harder to clog. But what I did not see coming is that my desiccant, in this case calcium chloride, will be basically quite large chunks of it. So I had a little bit of trouble packing this thing. So this was really over engineered. But in the end I was able to fill this thing up and proceed. Now problem here is that I have only one of these holders, quote unquote, even though it's bearing extractor. But I have more of these stands, so I will, I will, I guess I will wrap this around some rod and leave it there. I don't know, I would say this is good enough. So next thing, I have to make chlorine generator, so I made this thing. But I forgot what I was doing, so I cut off this thing, this dangly bit, and... So what I did is that I hit this section and pushed it inside, so this thing is concave, if you can see it here. So the drops will go through the center of the tube. I would redo this part normally, but I don't have very much time, so I am sticking with this one. Alright, so this time I have been able to find actual TCCA, not only cyanuric acid. And unfortunately, this came in form of tablets, so I had to crush them. But this shouldn't be a big deal. Now let's get into the fun stuff. So here I have the sand bath. And I will use one side neck flask. So let's eyeball about 100 mils of this thing. Okay, that's 100 grams, so a little bit over 100 mils. I'm using this kind of thing for chlorine. It goes all the way to the bottom, but a little bit offset. Now I have this long ass temperature probe and I will stick it through the condenser actually. And it goes all the way to the bottom, but not quite. Now I need to add these light bulbs somehow there. So let's do that now. So I made these reflectors and I basically soldered some big fed, big fed wire and I will just place it there and put some weight over it.
and that's basically it and some even more heavier weight just make sure that bobs are not touching and now since this is only 120 watt power supply and these bulbs are 110 watt I need to start the, start the lights in sequence so I will start one and then I will start second one and yep that's about it oh boy that's toasty and finally let's finish our chlorine generator I'm going to fill it up about you know, halfway or so I would speed this up but I don't want to overpressure the column because it can handle only so much flow so I'm going rather slowly here Oh yes It's already generating quite a bit of chlorine I am adding right now some boiling chips because well I am optimist well am I but I don't want this thing to explode on me so to be safe than sorry I'll I already can see that there's quite a bit of water there so that sucks but hey You know what, call me a chicken, but I have moved these bulbs a little bit further away from the flask because I'm fucking afraid that it will crack and... Well, not afraid, but I don't want to lose it, that's one thing, and I don't want the whole reaction to be ruined just for my stupidity, so... Alright, we are at 80, so safety screens engage. Alright. And I'm I'm scared. Jesus. All right, this goes to the minimum. I would say. Yeah, that's a pretty nice view. Speaking about safety squints, last time I have done this reaction, the... I guess the whole mixture reached its flash point and the hole inside basically exploded, not exploded, ignited, I would say rather. And that's why I'm, I'm not happy with this obstruction in the condenser because bad things can happen. How about I would stick probe directly under the glass It could work See? So I have increased the drop rate of hydrochloric acid to something like this I mean, I guess you can calculate it precisely. I've added the scrubber there. And there's just finicky attachment here. So... It works fairly well. And I only added it because uh, it smells here a little bit. But now I have closed door and it's pretty fine. I cannot smell really any chlorine almost. But occasionally I, came, I come here and I suck 
VHCL of there. So other than this leaky joint, there's almost no smell of chlorine there. I would say there's obviously a difference because now we are bare now we are barely boiling. You can see here maybe that there's almost nothing in the condenser. We are definitely increasing boiling point of the substance, so that's a good sign. Now this doesn't look like toluene, does it? So I think we are pretty much getting there. Now if you look at this generator, at this point I find that the reaction is already going on in pretty steady state, no matter basically how much hydrochloric acid you add, but it will go for a very very long time. The drying tube seems to be pretty much dry all the way, so that's fine. Now I was pretty sure that I am smelling chlorine somewhere and would you look at that? Here you can see how in 30 minutes the temperature rose about 5 degrees Celsius. This trend doesn't really look like it's linear, but I did not log this so I can't really check. Ideally here you would control the chlorine addition rate, so you would have two scrubbers for hydrochloric acid and then for chlorine. You basically want no chlorine to escape reaction flask or should be consumed. I did not do this but I really should because apparently benzyl chloride can be polymerized in presence of heat I guess. So it really does not help if you are slow here. Alright so I drained nearly all acids that I had here since this is pretty much already paste. I think all TCCA is pretty much depleted. Pretty, hello, pretty high boiling point up there. Let's see how it looks near the glass. Oh boy, it's toasty. Now, we are at about 190 plus or minus and this isn't really even refluxing, so this could be even overdone. But I guess that's about okay. So what next? Turn this off, definitely. As you can see the... Can I? Yeah. Let's, let's look at this. It's very brown. Not even in yellow. So I will have to distill this. And we will see. Oh man. This is nasty, nasty liquid. Jesus. Come on. Nice. Now, funny thing is that in low concentrations, this thing smells like slightly burnt chicken. How heavy this thing is? Yeah, it's quite heavy. I will have to measure the density of, of this stuff, I guess after distillation. Yeah, so it smells really nasty. My eyes are burning a little bit. 
I mean, I can breathe quite well, so it's not that nasty. So I was running this direction like from 10 to 3 a.m. That's... Two... Five hours? That's only five hours, that's quite quick. But in any case, I'm using this small container of water, like very small, and active cooling with 100 watt heat pump, and the temperature of the water is... Fucking hell. Well, I'm not sure if this will... Yeah. This much. And MBN is for sure greater than that. So, definitely good investment and great project to do, I would say. Okay, so it's time to clean this body up. So I'm going to transfer this into the room either. So this thing boils quite fine, I just had to cover glass with aluminum foil because it was cooling the vapor too much. There are no distinct fractions really, just some garbage at start and also in the end. I was a little bit surprised with the yellow color, but I think this is consistent with the Science Madness forum post pictures. And also temperature is a little bit too low, so foreshadowing. Alright, so there's still some high boiling point fraction. But it's quite tarry, and I don't think it's what we are looking for. This would be our final product, I guess. We'll add a few, few mils of water there. Like 20. Let's mark this. Uh, oh. Okay, that's about correct. Now let's add our substance up to the mark. So that's pretty much 22.5. So that's 11. Point twenty-five. This is per ten mils, so that's one point one two five. You like to use dots, right? That's not very good because benzyl chloride is one point two five four and Benzyl chloride is 1.1 1 .1 exactly. So that means that we have probably some benzyl chloride there, but not much. Let's see just for fun where, where this star sits at. Hmm, closer. Alright, so I think this is pretty much garbage because there is no easy way to separate benzyl chloride from benzyl chloride. And for this reason, I mean, I could proceed with hydrolyzing this and getting benzyl alcohol and benzaldehyde and then I can separate them, which is probably what I will have to do anyway. But, but it's quite low yield, that's the problem for me. I think that my main problem was that I was too slow. I should really flow chlorine at least twice as fast as I did. Maybe bring lights a little bit closer to reaction flask. So I will readjust and probably redo this reaction once again. But that will take some time, so for now I will leave this there and see you next time.